Hey guys, Kevin Smith for Heroes Reborn, episode 3, Under the Mask. And I gotta tell you guys that one, sorry I didn't review this uh, episode last night. I was busy last night, I really had no time to review anything. Um, but yeah, and then I just saw Sicario, and you guys saw that I reviewed it, and literally I got home, and then I had like a half an hour, and I'm like, there's no way I can get my Heroes Reborn review up, and then see Sicario, because the movie was at 4, and I got home at like 3, there was no way I was going to be able to review Heroes Reborn and review Sicario at the same time, there was no way I was going to do that. So I said, okay, I'll wait. And you know what, I'm fine with that, because I gotta tell you guys, I'm enjoying the show overall, but it has so many problems, and it really needs to get its act together, because I want to really like this show, but I can't. And there are so many things that I'm going to talk about, and everything that I say, I'm going to say can, they can improve this show. But there are so many things, at this point, this doesn't feel like one show, this feels like 500 different shows, and I'm going to talk about this. Now let's just start with the beginning of this episode, which already I don't really care about, and I should, but I don't, because we start in the Arctic, and we see this invisible entity telling Melina to get ready because there's another wave coming, and uh, storm clouds from over the ice, Melina says she's not ready, her invisible mentor tells her the world will need her soon and she must try. Problem is, we've seen three scenes of this character so far. Three scenes, and and two two in this episode, one in episode one. I still don't care about her at all, and I don't care what's coming. Okay, they keep saying, oh, something is coming. Can you please explain to me what this is? I need more information, and the show is not giving us the information that we need, and it's not showing us why what's coming is that important. They're acting like it's important, but something's coming does not mean that's important. Anything could happen. A tornado could hit. Uh, the Arctic could die. Uh, somebody could be dying. I mean, so many things could be happening, and it might not be as major as we think. And I'm really worried that this is going to let us down. That's really what I'm worried about here. So, basically, Quinn and Noah then steal a truck for the drive to find Molly. Quinn wants to go to the ER for his gunshot wound, but Noah says he'll sew him up later. Now, Quinn and Noah's plots, I really am enjoying, I have to say. I really love what they did with them in this episode. I'm starting to really get into their plots um, as a whole, but I'll tell you why I'm not as invested as I should be. Um, the weakest storyline right now, at least, is Joanne and Luke. The next scene with Joanne and Luke, I could give two shits about. I really could. Joanne and Luke are two characters that could have been really great. But already, they're changing up what they're doing on this show. Because Joanne and Luke listen to the news about the manhunt for Sharish. And she asks where he wants to go hunting Evo's next. And she says they need this. She needs this. He says he knows. And someone on the radio says he wishes Claire Bennett would have died when she jumped off a Ferris wheel. And Luke touches the radio to change the channel. And the engine just dies out of nowhere. The engine dies and they get out of the car they notice how hot it is, and basically you can tell that something's going on there. Um, so this was quite interesting on what's going on there, and I'll get to what's going on with them a little bit later. But then we see Miko, who I have to say is the character I'm least invested in. I'm least invested in Miko. Like, Joanne and Luke, I think, is the weakest right now, but I am least invested in Miko. And this is a huge problem because what's going on with her is really interesting, and I'm not really that interested at all. I, I don't really care about Miko. I don't. She's in the lobby of the tower. One of the guards touches her sword. She tells him not to do that. Then she does battle with all the guards. She tells them to tell her where her father is. She knocks them down, but they keep coming. And basically, then we get introduced to this group, Renatness. Um, And basically, we get this character of Harris, who he comes to the lobby and tells her it's time to surrender. And she comes at him and he punches her in the face. He knocks her down again. He grabs a sword and says it's not hers. And... This just isn't interesting to me, and I'll tell you guys why it's not interesting. Because we have 500 plots on this show that are so much more interesting. There are about 7 plots on this show right now, and Miko's and Joanne and Luke's are not the most interesting. And uh, what is very interesting is what happens with Molly and Noah and all of them in this episode. This I honestly really liked. Because as we know, Molly is hiding at this point. Nobody knows that she, you know, now people people are starting to figure out that she's Molly Walker. Um, and I thought it was definitely very interesting. So she takes a small airport to New Jersey and Francis and Taylor get ready to load her onto the plane. But the pilot says that Francis is in trouble with Harris. And Taylor says to call now. Molly tells them that they can't send her back there. And Taylor and Molly get on the plane and Francis is left behind. Molly screams, fights the man who loads her up. And Francis says to just get her to mid-Dane. And Molly screams, says that they're going to kill her. Begs them not to do this. They shoot her with a trank dart to shut her up. And basically then we meet Erica Kravis of Renatness. 
Now, Renatnis, I think, is very interesting overall. But again, there's so many plots on this show that uh, it just, it becomes, you kind of forget about certain things. You really do. And basically, she gives a speech to the board, says they can't rely on anyone else to solve the problems of the world. She says tomorrow they launch Epic. And basically, Epic, what it's going to do is that it's going to be, she, you know, she, she says they get the last piece and says the, proce the processor is back in their hands. She tells them doing good is good business. And basically what Epic is, is it's kind of like a Google Glass, but what it's going to do is it basically lets them track down Evos, which in itself is very interesting. But again, now we have more characters to follow. When we just got introduced to a whole bunch last week, and... I'm worried that the show is just going to be character overload. And if you guys know what that means, it's when there's just too many characters on the show. And I'll give you a perfect example of that. The Vampire Diaries Season 6. Way too many characters. Um, let me think of what other shows. American Crime. That's why I stopped watching American Crime. Because there were too many characters, I thought, on that show. Um, a show like Arrow. That show has way too many characters. Definitely way too many. Um... Walking Dead is overcrowded, definitely very overcrowded. It's a great show, but it's overcrowded. These are examples of character overload, and that's what this show is becoming. It's not becoming an interesting show. It's becoming more of, let's just introduce this character. That's what would seem more to me. It seemed less of, let's, you know, it seemed more of, let's just introduce this character. Now, I really do like this scene, I have to say, because basically we see Harris comes in, this is a girl with a sword causes a scene in the lobby. He says it's, it's Hero's sword, and she claims to be... Hero's daughter, and Erica says to keep her in custody and take care of her. So basically, they're saying that she is definitely um, Hero or Hiro, however you pronounce his name, uh, his daughter. Which I that think that I think is very interesting. Uh, Carlos, as a character, basically he grabs a photo from his brother's board ready to go looking for someone else, and Jose shows up, and Carlos says. Sorry guys, I was interrupted there, but like I was saying with Carlos, he grabs a photo from his brother's board ready to go looking for someone else. Jose shows up, Carlos says he is closing up shop early, and uh, basically Jose asks if the cops who won't find who killed his dad, and Carlos says not to be sure, then tells the kid that things will get better, and uh... In Japan, Ren goes to the tower, finds the guards licking their wounds, he sees Erica come out of the elevator, snaps a trick, and Harris tells Erica that they land in midday later, and Ren sees they have the sword, and he tells her where they're holding Miko, and Ren hears all this, walks away, he runs into an employee and snags her past, and lets himself into the secured area. Again, I really like this group of Renatnis, I just don't like that it's connected to Miko, because Miko, I just feel, is the weakest character right now. I like the other characters a lot, that's probably why. I really like what's going on with Carlos, I like what's going on with Tommy, who will get into Tommy. You can notice so far he's not in this episode yet, he's not in it till, like, randomly, it's, it's weird when he comes into this episode. Um... I'll get into that, but a lot of the characters in the show are just so much more interesting than Miko, and... Basically, Ren hears all this, walks away. He runs to an employee and snags her past and lets himself in the secured area. And Quinn and Noah then sit in the ER and Quinn asks how they know the Evos and Noah captured who weren't being used to make texts like Renatnis is using Molly. And Noah says not to tell the doctors he got shot. Quinn goes back and Noah looks around. Then Dr. Moore walks up to him and he says he's surprised to see him back. And Noah says he's passing through. Moore says the last time he saw him was June 13th. And Moore asks him to wait a moment then says... <clears throat> He'll be back, and he goes to call security, but Noah's already in the wind. And basically, the dirty cops have a woman there interrogating, and Carlos watches through the window, <clears throat> I mean through the door, and he sees them back her to the window. They throw her out, and she flies away, and, other, and one cop complains to the others that they're out 25k, but the guy in charge says he tagged her. And Carlos makes a noise, and they hear, and they hear, and they take some shots at him, and Carlos runs, and the priest grabs him and hides him with his Evo powers. And again, like I said, Carlos just, every person he meets seems to be an Evo. This in itself is very interesting, but again, character overload here. I don't like how these characters aren't connecting. I know they're going to connect at some point, but I'm not really a fan of how they're handling all this. Because Harris, Harris then goes to interrogate Miko. He has a briefcase. He asks where she got the sword. She says her father, and he asks if it's a Tomo. And he shows her a photo of the lobby and says she appeared out of nowhere. She's making origami dragons from scraps of paper. And Ren then sneaks up to that floor. So the guards talk about the girl with the samurai sword as Ren hides from them. He creeps toward the conference room, and Quinn comes out looking for Noah and sees news about Renatnis, then sees the security guards in an announcement about a suspect with glasses, of course, that being Noah. So Noah holds out a gun on a security guard. He asks why they're looking for him, and Noah says he put a guard in the hospital. 
And Northern demands to see security footage from last year, and then we get probably the strangest thing in this episode with Joanne and Luke. This was so strange. It really was. I mean, this kind of just came out of nowhere, and they're at a diner, and she talks about their plans as she flips through a file, and I could care less about Joanne, honestly. I don't even know why Joanne is on this show at this point. You could have just had Luke. I get that she's, you know, his wife and everything, but she's done nothing as a character so far. There's nothing that interesting about her. She's kind of boring, and again, it's just another character that we have to watch on this character overload of a show. It's, it's just too much, honestly. I'm sorry, it is. Um, basically... They're talking about how Luke says they should head out to L.A. He says they should see the ocean. Joanne says two guys always love the water and nods. And Lou then goes to cut his steak and his knife turns hot and cooks his rare steak to well done. So we're starting to realize that he has Evo powers. How this makes sense, I have no idea. I don't understand how any of this makes sense. Because here's the thing with me with this. We have not seen anything relevant to this at all. Like, we did not see any information about, oh, you know, he might be starting to have Evo powers. There was nothing that really showed us that he's having these powers. There was nothing really that did that. And me personally, this felt completely out of place. I don't know why they're going this direction with the character. Maybe later they should have done this, but episode three is not the time to do this. It's really not. It's way too early. I want to see more of Joanne and Luke go with Renatness. I want to see that go on. It doesn't seem like that's happening. It doesn't even seem like they're really in charge anymore. They seem like they were the main threat last week, and now all of a sudden they're not. And it's just very strange, definitely. It would have made more sense if they would have showed some of this last week, but they didn't. So now it feels like a completely different character altogether, and I'm really not a fan of that, I have to say. Definitely. So the guard shows Noah footage and says the timestamp keeps skipping around, and Noah sees, sees uh, Hero, and we see Noah looking at a body under a sheet, and he gets upset, and he thinks that the body might be Claire, and he demands the guard to pull up hospital records on Claire, and they see he's with Molly, and he doesn't know why he's with Molly. Quinn is there, startles Noah, Norris, the guard, gets a call to check in, and Noah looks at him and runs out with Quinn. And Quinn asks how she could die with her powers, and Noah says he doesn't know and wonders why he had his memory race, which is a good question. Why was his memory race? We don't know this yet. And he says Renee told him he wasn't supposed to know the plan, and he says Molly was at the hospital too. And like Hero as well, Noah says that Molly may have the answers, but worries they'll digitize her powers. So Molly walks onto a plane. Taylor sits nearby. She asks Taylor if she knows who she is or was paid not to wonder. And Molly asks why that place picked up where Primatech left off. And she tells Taylor they're going to kill Francis or turn his powers into an app and tells Taylor she got her boyfriend killed and will do the same to her. So in, you can tell right away that Taylor's a threat. And that's something I will say is that the characters of Erica and Taylor are very threatening. They're very good villains. And Harris as well. I think they're both very good villains. And Harris asks basically Nico if she has her father's power, if she's just his best work. He slides a briefcase closer and she asks what he means. And he asks if she forgot the accident, the death. He opens a briefcase, pulls out a sheath of knives and says maybe he can help her remember. She screams. Ren runs in. She punches Harris, then grabs a cleaver and chops his hand off. And Ren stares because Harris is not bleeding. His arm is black digitally, is back digitally. His cut off arm then grows a second of him and basically he just keeps growing arms but here's my thing with this he's supposed to be an evo hunter how the hell does this work i don't understand how any of this works is he like a robot or something because if he is hunting evos then he's a hypocrite he is there's no reason for him to hunt evos if he can grow all these arms there's no reason for that to happen it was very very strange and again something that just felt very weird in this episode um so, Ren and Miko run out, he shows her the photo of Erica and says she's the boss and has her sword, and he says they went to America, and Miko says they have to go. Joanne and Luke then steal a jeep and pull up at a cheap hotel, and he tells her to go check them in while he gets some fresh air, and she goes to the motel office, the sun comes out, Luke gets way too hot, his hands are glowing, then his whole body starts to glow with heat, and he asks where this is happening, and then it seems he's consumed with light, and again, we don't know why he's getting these powers, it just feels weird that this is the direction they're taking his storyline. Because again, what would have made sense is if they would have shown some sort of sign last week, not just randomly change his character from 
a good, you know, a villain to someone that we're supposed to sympathize with because I'm not going to sympathize with him. I sympathized last week with him, which I thought was very well done because, you know, their son got killed. That is understandable. I understand that they're going after the Evos. Now, it seems like they don't give a shit about this anymore. They don't care about going after the Evos. It's, it's weird. I understand this, definitely. So then randomly we see Tommy, who we haven't seen this entire episode. He it's and I'm not kidding you guys. This is when the episode is almost over. Now we're seeing Tommy. Tommy did not need to be in this episode. Tommy was a very good character last week. They do almost nothing with him in this episode. Nothing that interesting really. Cuz his mom's talking to him asking what girl he's doing them for and he says he's going to Brad's to play video games, but she says he's lying because he's in his favorite t-shirt and she says he lied so he can't go. He says he wanted to be a normal kid and says she's not the one protecting him now and she asks what that means. He says someone has been sending him texts to help him. She forbids him from leaving the house and he says watch me then portals right past her and she freaks out and basically at the party Brad tells everyone that Tommy got the beer for the party and Emily sees his newfound popularity and seems concerned and this is the way they're taking this storyline. I'm not a fan of this at all because Tommy seems completely disconnected from everything else going on in the show um, and that just felt very strange as does Carlos. Carlos also feels very disconnected. Um, a lot of the characters in this episode are definitely starting to feel disconnected from the main story here. So Harris and Eric are at the epic launch, and he says Molly should be there soon. Sure enough, she's brought she's brought in through a loading bay, and Quinn and Noah skitter through the door. Quinn says they're in the Death Star and is freaking out, and Noah says sorry, then punches him in the arm where he was shot, and Quinn says he hates him, and Noah says he knows. Taylor tries to call Francis and can't reach him, and Molly tells her she hopes she can live with it. Taylor tells them to get her to Harris, and Quinn staggers into the hall, says he's been shot. Molly freaks when she sees Noah, says she's not going anywhere with him. Noah tells her he had his memory wiped, and he says she's the only one that can tell him what happened, and says, please. And Molly says there's too much of a risk, and he shouldn't have come. So Molly runs off, but Harris is there, grabs her up. Emily leaves, and Tommy follows her out, asks why she's going. She says he was having fun, and Tommy says he wasn't, doesn't even like beer. He asks if Brad would be mad if he walked her home, and she says it's fine, and... This is stupid. I'm sorry. This scene is really stupid. I didn't care about this at all. Uh, I want to care about Tommy and Emily, but it just, they shoehorn this in so quickly. And basically, Anne comes home and he said, basically, Casper the hitman's in the car when he's accosted by Tommy's mom, Anne. And he says he kept a promise to keep an eye on him and says the world will need him soon. And he tells her she needs his help. And Anne tells Casper to stay away from him, tells Tommy to enter the car. He asks who she was talking to, and then demands he gets in the car, and he gives Emily a last look, then gets in, and basically, you can tell that these stores are going to connect eventually, but it just kind of feels um, impossible at this point. There's so much going on in their stories that I don't want this to come together. I don't, because there's so much going on already, and Carlos shows up in his El Vangador outfit, warns the flying Evo that the guy is there to get her, and the problem with this scene is that it just felt like the Flash or Arrow. There was nothing that different about this, and I really was not a fan. I'm not a, If this is what they're going to do with Carlos, I'm not a fan of this. So they're just going to turn him into Arrow. I'm not a fan of this at all. I don't like that, definitely. Because the thing with him knowing about the Evos, that's definitely very interesting. And him knowing, you know, that people are Evos and he has to keep that secret, I find that very interesting. Him just being this vigilante, I'm really not a fan of, and... We see that he roughs up a cop, he asks who's behind him, and it looks like the guy has powers. He starts to kick Carlos's ass because every single person that Carlos meets is an Evo. It's really weird, and at midday, Molly is shoved into a car, the Epic Systems brought up, they're ready to bring it online, and this scene, I will admit, was genuinely really intense. I really like this scene with Molly. They're choppers in the Arctic that are part of the process, and Taylor asks her mom, Erica, about Francis, and her mom says they can talk about tomorrow. They're told epic, and basically we realize that Erica is Taylor's mom, and I thought that was very interesting when we found that out. I really like that, and uh, that definitely makes sense why they would work together. I thought that was definitely very well done. So, Erica says they're announcing Epic, which would not be possible without Taylor, and says Evos don't belong in their bed, and Molly screams that something is done to her, and Erica takes the stage, and Noah's nearby with Quinn, and Erica says that Renatness has been working on Epic for years, they plug a cord into her neck, and Renatness basically, we realize, built, cer basically, Cerebro to track the, you know, basically built uh, this to track, um, the Evos, 
And Erica says they can find all Evos around the world. And Erica says the tracking system offers remote viewing of all Evos. And Erica says that they can scan anyone, anywhere, anytime. And she says Epic is being used by military and first responders around the world. And the men in the Arctic look like Harris's clone. And they are looking for Melina. And Erica puts on the eyewear and says there's an unregistered Evo among them. Has the guards call her, call the guy out, and basically... Quinn says that he's terrified, and he says if they can harness all the Evos, it will be disastrous, and Melina's is told that they're almost out of time, and you realize that she's still on the show, and Noah tells Quinn that they have to get to Molly and set her free, so basically, that's what they have to do, so Anna drives Tommy, and he asks who is the man she's talking to, he says she has the look she gets when she's ready to move them, he says they don't have to go this time, he says he thinks they're supposed to stay, he asks why all the lights are red, she says they have to go now, she turns illegally on a red, speeds away, they're struck by another vehicle and then the episode just ends and it looks like next week things are going to start to come together but at this point this show is so so convoluted look guys overall i give this episode a b plus why because there were some very interesting things problem was i'm watching this show and i'm realizing damn i'm really not as invested as i should be there are some things that are going on this episode that I should be a lot more invested in, and I'm not because this storyline is much more interesting than what's going on here. It's going to be a problem. There's too many storylines going on in this show. You got Miko's storyline, which could be very interesting, um, and I do like what they're, you know, uh, it could be very interesting, but they have five other storylines that are just so much more interesting. This whole thing with... Uh, you know, Joanne and uh, Luke, I think is really stupid. I'm not a fan of Joanne and Luke. I, why is this happening to him? Why is he turning into an Evo? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. I don't like it, and I think it's really dumb. Um, Miko being Hero's father, okay, fine. But it just seems like an excuse to get Hero back, um, which I can understand. I, I know he was, one of, he was a fan favorite, but it just seems like a pointless excuse. And Already, I don't see why this show is necessary. There's nothing that's telling me we needed a Heroes reboot. And what a good reboot does is tell you this is why we needed to do this. Nothing has told me that they needed to do this. Nothing. At this point, I feel I should be focusing on the Jack and Quinn story, and that's really it. I know that there are other heroes out there, but they're just simply not that interesting. Tommy as a character was very interesting last week, but... When you give him stuff like this, it's very stupid. My other thing with the show, and I said it before, it's not doing anything different from shows like Arrow, The Flash, or Ains of S.H.I.E.L.D. Shows that take bigger risks, shows that have better tech, you know, better visuals, shows that have not as many characters. Okay, Ains of S.H.I.E.L.D. has a lot of characters, but it knows how to balance them out very well. As does, you know, The Flash doesn't have a lot of characters, but Arrow has a lot of characters, and it kind of balances them out definitely better than this. And it doesn't feel like I'm watching a whole bunch of different shows. That's my problem with this show, is that I feel like I'm watching a whole bunch of different shows rather than just one. And I get that that's kind of how it's supposed to be, but at this point, I just don't really like the way it's working out. I want to be a lot more invested in this show, and I'm just not. But over, guys, to my review of this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys thought of this episode. If you have seen it, are you having the same problem I'm having with this show? Don't get me wrong. I really like what they're doing with Renatness. I think this is definitely very interesting, and it's definitely going to bring all the he all the Evos together. I understand that. But it just felt like they're just doing way too much with these characters already, and I want to be invested in them, and I'm really not as invested as I want to be. But that's it my review. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in my next video, which will be for my second... 30 Days of Horror Halloween movie review, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.